hello YouTube family it's Melissa here um, after posting my Facebook poll to see which people would like to hear um, everyone chose a story from my foster care experience versus my 47 hour labor which I'll do that video later no problem so let's see where do we start it was very <laughs> foster care kind of sucked y'all I really did not gonna lie um, they try to knock me down, but not today, Satan. So, anyways, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. So, I was out there in the hood, really, was in the hood. Being a hood rat, of course. And so, I was taken from my home when I was about eight years old. years old um, all my siblings were all taken out the same day um, it was all kind of it all went kind of fast so I just remember we were all we all crammed in some cop cars we went down to the police station we were just sitting there, we were there like overnight like I don't remember them telling us what was happening I remember being very confused I remember just like all the stuff around me and I did I didn't know what was going on like who does that who doesn't tell a child what's going on when it's the middle of the night i'll wait um i remember the f and then the following day we pulled up to this lady's house who was going to be my foster mom um she seemed really nice like she was she was like she was pretty nice um and understanding and um she was just very kind to me um i remember the first night like i bawled you know i was scared i wanted my mom I didn't know what's going on and I just kept feeling all this anxiety and she was like comforting me and, and trying to make me feel um, a little bit better you know I'm just like this little girl um, and it was me and my sister so my sister was there as well who's a couple years older than me so we were there um, and it was okay home but things kind of turned a little bit sour um, once I was out, out of school so when I was in school um, I would get dropped off at school and I was there and then I got dropped off at her mom's house the lady my foster mom's mom's house and at her mom's house it was her mom and her sister and my foster mom's sister sorry this is getting confusing so I have my foster mom we're gonna call her Anne okay foster mom Anne okay and then her mom we're gonna call her Gloria so Anne's mom is Gloria and Gloria also has another daughter and we're just gonna call her Cheryl okay so we have Ann Gloria and Cheryl so my foster mom Ann would drop me off at Gloria's home so and then with with Gloria was her sister Cheryl I almost forgot the names already so with them right so we stay there after school hours we get there like really really early in the morning It'd be like six o'clock in the morning we would just be out watching cartoons and stuff like that and so I just remember that um, Cheryl, Cheryl, she scared me. I remember she was so scary. She was, I'm pretty sure when I think about it now, that she was like into like, she was like an alcoholic and probably into drugs. I remember there being like a lot of guys around, so I'm not judging. I don't really know, like I was eight years old, so it could be a little bit miscued, but I just remember like that happening, okay? And then so basically the main thing I think that turned it sour so Cheryl had a daughter and me and the daughter were a couple years apart like she was a couple years younger than me and me and her were kind of close like we were friends we'd always still like we had like these little secret parties and stuff like that and we'd like hide behind like the garage and we'd like play, practice cheer moves and stuff like that and we were like we were cool you know and we really liked each other and it was we were pretty close so I remember at one point me and Cheryl's daughter were playing behind the garage because we like like I said we like to have a little secret parties like we're somebody and her mom came behind and at that time I was small like really small and Cheryl Cheryl's daughter was a little bit heavier but she was like strong not like fat fat but she was like strong so like she would always like pick me up so she was like picking me up at that time and then her mom came behind the garage to see what we were doing and she came in and she kind of looked like like we were doing something bad like she was like what are you guys doing and i'm just like 
then it was my plan. Like we were just to have me up in the air. Like it was like super fun. We were showing her our moves and and so she just like acted weird ever since then. Like it was like so awkward. Like she was like always like watching us like we were doing something wrong. What are you kids doing back there? She'd like peep around the corner, just be like Just sneaking, just peep it all the time, just peep it all the time. It's annoying. And so I remember after that point, I remember that had to be the issue because after then, like things got weird. So after then, she she did not like me. She she scared the crap out of me. She would have her eyes would be like bloodshot, so bloodshot, and she just so freaking scary. Her eyes pretty much looked like this. Her eyes were so big, and like I remember, she was saying she was really tall, and I would just be so, I was so scared of her. And the main thing I bring this up is because she, once that happened, she got ugly. Like she would like drive all the other kids to school, and then she would make me walk by myself to school. And it was like quite a few blocks away. Like I would walk by myself, and they'd be like, she'd be like waving to me from in the car, like. Good luck, little girl. Go ahead, little eight year old girl walking by yourself because now she met. And you know, and poor my sister Nicole, who stayed with me as well, was gonna walk with me. But being that Cheryl had an attitude and you know was upset about something, I don't even know what it was. She pretty much said that, like, and she like told Nicole, like, no, like, you're gonna stay in the car and then she's gonna walk by herself. So I walked by myself to and back from school for like the whole time, whether it was cold, raining, snowing, thunderstorms, it didn't matter, I walked by myself. Cause I'm a beast like this. So I remember that happening. Um, she, and the worst part of it too, this I'll probably end with this particular one. The main thing, cause there was many, many things happening, let me tell you. But um, the main thing uh, that happened, I got kicked out of that home. Now this is what had happened. I walked in, on Cheryl's daughter and a neighbor girl they had they apparently had little crushes on each other probably experimenting you know um and I caught them they had that kissed each other right not a huge deal like yeah I mean it's like you know whatever but it's like it could have been so many other things I caught them and I was like oh well, this is weird like what's happening here you know um but I just like didn't really want to say nothing about it well so I remember it all went down really fast like it got so scary i remember cheryl's daughter got freaked out because she for some i thought like i was going to tell i don't know if like i told maybe nicole nicole told yeah i think i told nicole about it like oh this happened she feeling guilty she told our foster mom our foster mom and she ended up telling our foster mom told cheryl so cheryl what she like freaked out and stuff like that and and you know like you know why you know but basically Cheryl's daughter said that I made her kiss this other girl the devil is alive I rebuke you that's what went down they pretty much like you know she made me do it it was all her fault you know she was like yeah you need to you need to do this and I didn't do that I had nothing to do with it I just happened to walk in on it I didn't even wasn't even gonna tell nobody like I just didn't care like I was whatever you know and so cause she basically said that because she didn't want to get beat I mean homegirl got her butt whipped a lot and um so yeah so she's out of fear and which I understand you know we're both little kids I get it like I said there's no hard feelings but she yeah she lied and she said that I had made her do that so from that point on they're like she's got it she's like Melissa's got to go you know all this stuff so they put me in the back of the car and they were just yelling at me and they were just like you know they're passing by passing by the car giving me dirty looks I am bawling I am so upset I'm terrified they're kicking me out I have to go to a new home I don't know what's going on Nicole's upset at me because she was like I caused a problem to to get kicked out when she really liked this home and she really liked it there and and I felt like I was like I was the problem you know it was all my fault even though I didn't do anything um, you know Nicole's upset now because she wants to stay here now we can't because it's because something that I did which I didn't do 
So they're passing by and their aunts and uncles are like, well, you know, you shouldn't have done what you've done. You should have done with that. You shouldn't have done that. Blah, 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 blah. So I got kicked out of that home and I was on to the next home. So looks like it's time to pack up my little trash bag of clothes. That's the story of just a couple things from just the one place. Like there's so many different stories. And I know this seems kind of humdrum. So we'll do like an upbeat one next because that was kind of sad. But like I said, there's no hard feelings um, for the people involved. Um, it's just, you know, I'm not holding any grudges. Like I have a great family that adopted me. They supported me. They made sure that I was okay. They let me be me. They let me talk. You know, as a child, like to be able to, to express what I was feeling and to express what, you know, what was going on and what had happened and to sympathize with me and all those things. So I don't, I don't have no bad feelings. I don't have no grudges. Yes, I'm not best friends with these people and, you know, I'm not going to volunteer to hang out with them because frankly, I don't care. And, um, you know, I deserve better and they should have, they should have known better. And I know that at this point, my foster mom at the time, I think she did apologize or at least said that she didn't know that these things were happening but it doesn't really take away from the fact that they did happen and you did not believe me when i said these things were happening and yeah so there's just so many different things that go into it but that is the gist of two little small instances from my far first foster home experience if you found these videos entertaining please like comment and subscribe and please in the comments let me know if you'd like to know more about these kind of experiences i also have some funny experience experiences as well it wasn't all bad um so please like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys next week mm -hmm.